All right, welcome back to episode four of the MT Pro tutorial series. Today we're going to go over sample rate, optimization, and vertical resolution. Uh, I'm going to show you a quick cheat sheet. I recommend pausing it and taking a screenshot. So I hope you can see that. If not, I'll try to clean it up a little bit. GoPro can be silly about focusing on screens. So if you can't, I'll try to post a screenshot of that in the video somewhere. Uh, but uh, what we're going to do today is, is work out a procedure for using the lowest sample rate acceptable for the signal we're attempting to capture. The reason we want to do that is to minimize file size and get the largest buffer size we can get. Uh, now you don't have to, you can just crank your settings and run it and deal with the, you know, the compromises you make doing that and that's just fine. But uh, I like to optimize my file size and I like to not net have the and the filter, I haven't really figured out a filter for this setting, and the best way to filter your files are to just use a, an appropriate sample rate. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, I already went ahead and took a high sample rate capture of a secondary ignition pattern here and a cam sensor. So what we're going to do, how we're going to determine the sample rate that we need is we're going to zoom way in and we're going to do that by clicking and dragging the mouse over with the left click to here and i want to see this spike here so that is my inductive kick off of the secondary ignition now i'm going to hit control right click and zoom out a little bit so you can see I'm per when I'm doing secondary ignition analysis, I'm probably not looking for high definition in this vertical spike here on the blue trace. What I'm really looking at is this burn line, the voltage relative to the firing voltage relative to the dwell voltage, and the end of it, how it responds to load and things like that. So chances are I don't need to ever see this. But what if I want to, right? So let's just measure the first half of this inductive kick. And if you look at our measured blocks down here, it says we're at about 92 kilohertz. So that's a 92, 92,000 times per second. Uh, and the, the simple formula that we can use here to determine our sample rate, which is also in Hertz, is just figure how many points, because you have to remember a line graph is just plotted points. So how many points in this range would make this a usable graph? And I think three or four is reasonable between these two dots here. So between the time frame of 10, uh, microseconds. So between the time frame of 10 microseconds, I need three or four points of data to make a reasonable picture. So all I'm going to do is times my measurement in frequency by three or four. So we're at 92,000. 92, well, let's round up, say, 100,000. So if I round up to 100,000, 100,000 times three or four is going to be three or 400,000. Well, if we go to our sample rate and turn it down, it jumps from 200,000 to 500,000. Well, we're going to shoot for the high side. So we know at 500,000, we're going to have a realistically usable picture of this waveform at our zoomed out sampling rate. Uh, this is the best way I've found, uh, and really this is a, just a good method, to determine the lowest reasonable sample rate. Uh, and I'm going to show you how useful this gets on slower data. So right now we're just going to zoom all the way back out. 
So let's get rid of our markers and zoom all the way back out. And we've got our sample rate set to 500,000. So you know how that looks right now. You can see it. I'm gonna go start the car, or I'm gonna start the file, start the oscilloscope up, and then I'm gonna start the car at, and we originally took this capture at three million samples. So now we're only at 500,000 samples per second. So I'm gonna start this and then start the car and you can see how little the waveform changes. So you can see that's still a perfectly usable waveform. We could diagnose problems with that. Uh, I'll show you a snap throttle just for fun. So a perfectly usable waveform. Now, if you're gonna be analyzing these at high RPM, you'll wanna take a capture at high RPM, measure that same distance, and then decide what you need your sampling rate at by measuring the, the minimum distance you need and then times it by three or four to come up with a usable sample rate in Hertz. So, and you can see you can change your measured section here to Hertz so you can, you get an idea of what you need. Uh, and now I'm gonna show you that on the cam sensor one which is significantly slower so we can, we can use a significantly lower sample rate. And you'll see what happens to the secondary waveform, but if we're only looking at the cam sensor, we don't care what it does to the secondary waveform. But you can see the noise on the cam sensor. You can see up here a little bit of noise and then a little bit of noise when it's pulled down. And that's okay, but if we're just looking at the cam sensor shape and function, we don't need 500,000 samples to do it. And I'm gonna demonstrate that here. So we're gonna stop this. So now we have that stopped. We're at 500,000 samples right now. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to just measure the vertical line of our cam sensor. And we're gonna look over here at our Hertz and we're at 386.842 Hertz. So let's say 400 Hertz. So 400 times four is 1600. So realistically, to see this cam sensor waveform properly, we only need a 1600 hertz sampling rate. So let's go ahead and prove this by clicking on our sampling rate and let's turn it down to 1000, but let's turn it up to 2000 because we're gonna round up. We're always gonna round up. Why not have a little extra, right? So let's get rid of our markers. That's uh, control shift M to put your markers away. And then we're gonna go ahead and start our file again and start the car. Old Buick problems. All right, so you can see there is a little bit of leaning to our cam sensor waveform. So let's, we can turn our sample rate up in a oscilloscope mode. So we turn it up to 5,000 kilohertz, or five kilohertz or 5,000 hertz. And uh, we have a, a reasonably good square wave. So you can see where we, we need a significantly lower sampling rate to capture a slow sample like a cam sensor waveform versus a really fast sample like a secondary ignition capture. Uh, which I'm sure most of you guys that are using scopes every day or all the time know this, but, uh, but it's important to understand how to get your minimum sampling rate so you still have something usable. And you can see the three or four times hertz gets you reasonably close. And if, if you want to be picky about it, go five times. You know, you can go five times. We're at about a thousand hertz measuring that. You go five times, we're at 5,000 hertz sampling rate, and we have a really decent looking signal. Now you can see if we speed the engine up, that's not necessarily the case. So you want to make sure you set it up for the fastest vi visual 
indicator that you need. So if you're gonna run this vehicle at 8,000 RPMs versus 800, we're gonna have to 10 times this. So we're probably gonna have to go up to 50,000 or, uh, or 50K Hertz to get a reasonably good signal. So watch what happens to that cam sensor signal when I do a snap throttle. You can see how the edges kind of round off, the corners round off, that's because we're just not getting that sampling. Now, if you understand that that's happening, it's really not that big a deal. But if you do want a perfect waveform or you want an exact representation of what's going on, you're gonna have to turn up your sample rate, but you're gonna compromise your buffer size and your file size is gonna be significantly larger. So again, that all depends on how much you want to run uh, you know how big you want your file if you've got a five terabyte hard drive and you don't really care crank it up and go but you can see how much cleaner that cam sensor waveform is if we crank our sampling rate you see how we get all that noise so that's basically what your low pass filter is doing is reducing reducing your sampling rate to something usable and you can do that manually while you're taking the waveform in oscilloscope mode and you can see if we go too far it becomes barely usable. It's still usable at a thousand hertz, but barely. As you can see, we bump it up to 10,000 hertz and we have a really good waveform. Uh, also, I wanna demonstrate vertical resolution. So we're gonna do that really quick. I'm gonna stop the oscilloscope and I'm gonna take and just crank this to a thousand volts because I have a thousand volt input, input on, this, uh, on this scope. So why can't I just leave everything cranked to a thousand all the time and zoom in, right? Well, let's start our, that's what we got because our trigger is way off. Uh, let's move our trigger. So yeah, let's go ahead and put our trigger Here, let's turn our sample rate up to 500K. So we got our trigger, and we don't see our cam sensor, right? Well, let's stop this, and then we can zoom in on our vertical resolution. And you can see we do see something, but you're not gonna get really good a really good picture and you're, you have to have a heck of a computer to pick up really good vertical resolution because of the limitations of the scope. So a good rule of thumb is to stay, try to stay within five to 10 volts of your waveform you're attempting to capture. So in this case, this is a five volt sensor. So I'm gonna go ahead and back the, our, our voltage. And you can see this is the problem with vertical resolution. So once I have it saved, I can back it up. See how noisy that is? That is because we're hitting our limits of our vertical resolution because even though the waveform stops here, it's measuring a yes or no answer all the way to a thousand volts and all the way back down. So you can see you're gonna get some distortion in that if you're at too high of a voltage when you're, when you're doing this. So let's set this back down to five volts. That's five volts, and then I'm gonna hit Alt minus to zoom back out to our normal. And then watch how, clean, how much cleaner this gets when we start the oscilloscope. And here, let's change our trigger back to the cam sensor. So you see how much cleaner that gets with the voltage set appropriately? So a good rule of thumb is try to be within 10 volts of the waveform you're trying to capture, and again, this is a setup and then use it scope. So you're not gonna just have it ready unless you have a bunch of preset workspaces ready for certain situations, which you know I encourage you to play with that, set up those workspaces. I intend to create a bunch and I'll show you guys a bunch of videos as I get there. But, uh, but for now, I just wanted to show you how to set up your sampling rate, how to set up your voltage and why it's so important to set up your, ver your voltage or your Y axis as low as it can be to capture your waveform effectively. If you go too high, you'll get distortion due to the limitations of the hardware. So 
you, you there, it's just absolutely necessary to get a useful waveform that you understand those concepts of the the limitations of vertical resolution and the limitations of your sampling rate your buffer size and your storage so if you have really good storage and you don't really care about your buffer size you can crank your your sampling rate and just go to town uh, especially on the recording mode uh, so let's shut our our trigger off let's stop this let's put it on the recording mode and start so now we're recording this at 200 milliseconds per window as fast as it it'll record really until I run out of hard drive space. So there's a clock down here just next to the stop function. We can stop this again, look at a waveform, zoom in, take a good look at it. And then we're gonna Alt minus, oh no, it won't let me. So Control, uh, right click will get you back out. Actually it'll let me go out to two seconds and back to it. So now I can go back out to two seconds and run my, see you just pull your slider over if you wanna look at something and it's still recording. I just go back and it's going again. So I can pull this over here. I can zoom in on a section. Say I say something weird here, zoom back in and then just hit control, right click, zoom all the way back out or left click to zoom in if you want, all the way back out. And I just take my slider, which it's still recording all the way back over to the right, and there we go. This is our current time. I'll go ahead and give you a snap throttle so you can see. So right now we're at about a minute and a half, and it'll record and record and record as, as long as I have hard drive space. So now we can stop this and grab our slider. You can see it recorded all of that the whole time I was talking which is probably my favorite feature of the scope. But, uh, but anyway, I hope that helps you get your sample rate and vertical resolution set up. Uh, there's more videos in the works as I get time. So thanks for watching, I hope this helps.